Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta for this very exciting episode. I am actually co-hosting today with Katherine Edwards, who you see on the screen next to me. And this is our third installment with the mysterious Mr. Fox. First of all, Katherine, how are you doing today? I'm absolutely fantastic. I've had a great trip away, met inspiring people, had a lot of time to clear my thoughts, nearly had a plane crash, didn't have a plane crash. I am on back on top form. So I'm really looking forward to this episode today because I think there's going to be so much useful information for people. Oh, I'm really excited about this information today coming out. This is one of the most, um, I, to me, this is one of the most fascinating um, parts of the Law of One and the Cassiopeians. And of course, we got Mr. Fox. How are you, Mr. Fox? I'm doing well, thanks. Um, and, and I will say just for myself, and I know, Mr. Fox, you're going to go into more detail about this, but just as a human being, as somebody... You know, when I first met you a long time ago, I've known you for a very long time now, and you've, you've definitely been one of my mentors, one of my teachers. And when you started talking to me and teaching, to, teaching me about the law of one, and you started talking about the wonders, for me as a human being, a lot of things started to click and make sense. And we're going to talk more about the dangers of being a wonderer as well. And that's one of the most important things that I wanted to to bring up in this conversation just to help people who are watching him. I don't know if I've even told you this, Mr. Fox. Um, and this will make sense maybe when we get deeper into the conversation. But growing up, and Mr. Fox, you know a lot about the things that I went, the the, uh, the spiritual attacks I've been as a child, this everything I went through. And I, I in my late teens, early 20s, I had decided that um, I was created to be God's punching bag because so many things were happening to me that were really out of my control. And it really, really brought me to a, a huge place of depression. And then when I met you, Mr. Fox, and you started talking to me about the wanderers, it really changed my perception on myself. And that depression started to lift because I realized I wasn't God's punching bag, that there was something else going on that I was not aware of. And with this information about the Wanderers, things started to make more sense to me and I was better prepared to handle my life. Um, we also talk, talk about with the Wanderers, which we're going to talk about, um, the hierarchy of the negative side and why Wanderers are, attacked, are targeted and attacked so much. Um, why... Um, why uh, you know, we have amnesia as well. And I know I said to you, Mr. Vox, a couple of days ago, we were preparing this episode. And I said to you, you know, the one thing that gets me about the Wanderers, it always kind of jumbles my head up a little bit, is that the Wanderers themselves have not been on Earth for many, 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 many years, um, millions of years. You can correct me when, when we get into it, Mr. Vox. And I said to you, I said, but when I was a child, I've always been very fascinated by World War II. I always had a very... Um, like a need to really watch documentaries. And I always felt like I was there and I felt very viscerally connected to, to the Holocaust. And you said something interesting. You said, well, it probably wasn't that you were there. It's probably is that you heard that call. You heard the cries of what was happening. And that's what motivated you to come back because then 40 years later, I did come back in 1983. And so I kind of wanted to kind of start off with that, because that's really the intention of my intention into bringing this aspect of the law of one out is to help people out there who have been attacked a lot in their life and who have struggled to try to fit in with the matrix. And maybe they've gotten a little depressed or gone into their own darkness because they don't understand why they can't just be like their siblings or why they can't just live the life they're supposed to live. And hopefully this will answer some questions and give people some confidence that they are loved by God and that they have picked a very hard path. And there are, there are some obstacles they're going to have to go through, but I, I hope that it, this information does bring peace to people at the end of the day. So anyway, um, is there anything you want to add, Catherine, before we get into it? Well, I think what's great about things like this that we're going to go through is I just encourage everyone to see what resonates for them because all of us are on our own individual journeys through this incarnation. And there's going to be certain things for this that will either really resonate with you or or connect with someone you know or a loved one. So yeah, just really listen and see what calls to you from this information. Yes. All right. So Mr. Fox, with that being said, that was one of the first things you ever said to me when we got to really know each other. You said you're a wanderer. 
And then that's when everything started to open up for me and really, really helped my spiritual development. So Mr. Fox, just for our audience watching, and now remember, we have a lot of people watching who are very new to the law of one. So from a very simplistic per, uh, definition, what is a wanderer according to the law of one? Well, let me, let me read a passage from the raw material where they give sort of a general outline of, of a wanderer. And they said, imagine, if you will, the sands of your shores, as countless as the grains of sand are the sources of intelligent infinity. When a social memory complex has achieved its complete understanding of its desire, it may conclude that its desire is to serve others with the distortion towards reaching their hand figuratively to any entities who call for aid. These entities whom you may call the brothers and sisters of sorrow may move towards this calling of sorrow. These entities are from all reaches of the infinite creation and are bound together by the desire to serve. So as, as, an entity moves through the different densities and past the third, but especially as they move into the fifth and sixth densities. And these are mostly service to others orientated entities. They can eventually choose to reach out a helping hand to those suffering in the lower densities, but especially the third density. And so, they choose to be reincarnated back into third density because they've been called in one way or another by the entities of that, that third density. And so they're hearing that call and they bring themselves down into the lower densities and reincarnate. And so this is different than, you know, the people of third density going through the whole master cycle, looking to, you know, um, evolve into the fourth density. So they're coming back and lending a hand, but it's pretty complex. And I'll get into explaining that complexity of what it means to be a wanderer. So let me just start out with just some, some general um, stuff. They said back in 1981, there were approximately 60 million wanderers on the planet at that time. And that's probably increased by quite a bit, especially now that we're getting very close to the end of our fourth density cycle. And so it also should be remembered close, that- Close to know, the end of our third, the third density oh cycle. Oh yeah, that's what I meant. Third density cycle moving into fourth is what I meant to say. And so as we, as we get closer to the end of the master cycle and third density, there's a lot more potential for um, lessons to be learned, but also for service to be offered because, you know, there's going to be more suffering, things intensify right before our birth into, into fourth density positive. So getting into you know, like what densities wanderers normally come from. And they say that there are very few that come from fourth density because fourth density is more about processing all that we've gone through and learned in third density. And that takes quite some time to process all of that information. And also during that time, you know, in fourth density, you're learning how to create what they call that social memory complex where everyone pulls all of their previous life experiences together and they all come to the same, you know, a, a basic understanding of all those things. And, and, and they're able to then process other people's experiences and then their consciousness in a way just becomes one. And so that from there, then on out, they work as one unit through fourth density as they progress into fifth. And so there's so much going on there that you can't really uh, uh, 
offer yourself over for service other than the service of the of that social memory complex yeah do, do you understand what i'm saying and so then eventually you're graduating into in the fifth and in the sixth density and you're so that's still a little too as, as we've said you've said to me before in fourth density you're still a little too traumatized from your right, exactly you yeah want to come uh -huh. back. yeah you don't you definitely don't want to come back and so but as you get further away from third density your the potency of your memory of that experience lessens yeah and so but also your wisdom is greater and your 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 love and your light body is a lot stronger and you feel more prepared to drop down into that into the chaos of the of the third density and i say chaos even the most harmonious third density would probably be looked at as a bit chaotic from fifth and, and especially sixth density and so that's where the largest the largest number of wanderers come from sixth density and, and so let's um so let's pause there for a second just so people who are really new to this kind of understand what you're saying so a wanderer is a human being on this planet right now just like all of us a lot of people watching might be wanderers who come from the fifth or sixth density they they basically volunteered to come back to third density particularly at this time because they heard the call of suffering and pain from because what that what's better what's what's bigger service to others than to volunteer to come back to a war zone basically to help people um lighten the load as you've said mr fox lighten the load to right. help people stay on the path to get to fourth density positive right. and um and so they're coming because it's been so long and you said this on aquarius rising africa so what you're also seeing with wanderers is almost a naivety as well because they they've been away from their third density experience for such a long time that the, the potency of that experience has kind of lessened and they've come from such a positive place that they kind of come in, even though they are wiser souls, they're also a little bit more naive. So they get stuck in situations because they're used to being in a place where people are honest, where people are kind, right? And so, so there's a naivety to wanderers as well. Um, they're not jaded. They're, you know, they, they, and, and, uh, and they, but they also, you say, Miss, you told me, Mr. Fox, wanderers, because their soul has dropped down from a higher, uh, density their vibration is different and so therefore they are spotted easier by like fourth density negative beings correct kind of like a, a flame a moth to the flame yes in a sense for sure yeah that you know fourth the fourth density negative would target the wanderers in a way w which would you know hopefully to them hopefully get get a wanderer off track yeah, yeah or to shift them to the negative polarity so There's that's one thing i forgot to mention and let's just clarify this so if you're a wanderer when you come to third density you're also going through the veil of amnesia so yeah, let me i'm gonna i'm gonna get i'm gonna get to that okay okay Can I just I, I'm still... we move on so yeah. are the wanderers are they related to the volunteers that dolores cannon speaks about probably yeah uh-huh yeah. i'm sure it's, i'm sure it's one and the same for sure yeah, yeah. uh-huh yeah, I, I just saw a clip from her just recently. It wasn't talking about that, but it's funny you bring her up. So, okay, so the aim, the aim of, of wanderers is is to serve the entities of this of this planet in whatever way was requested, and it was also the aim of wanderers that their vibratory patterns might help lighten the planet as a whole. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so. And so that in and of itself, even if a wanderer isn't necessarily conscious of the fact that they're a wanderer, because there's different awakening levels that can be achieved once you come down. Um, but even, even without awakening and realizing that you're a wanderer, just you be just a wanderer being here can help lighten the load in a sense. Yeah. But as well, <clears throat> they're, you know, the, the, the ultimate intention of a wanderer is to awaken to their to their purpose yeah but only a small amount of wanderers ever ever wake up they say approximately about nine percent will awaken will awaken to the fact that they're a wanderer um so there's there's like i said there's there's different levels of of awakening that that can be experienced 
by a wanderer and and different things can can wake up a, a wanderer uh, give me just a second i'm gonna find um i had some some material i wanted to to read over about that you might have to edit this out sorry i lost it's okay I, no we'll, we'll just keep talking while you while you find that mr vox but um okay. But yeah, no, it's, it's, um, and that's, and that's again, why you're saying the uh, whole awakening to, and I know we're going to get into like the pitfalls of being a wanderer too. So I want to, while you're looking for that, I want to like really, really specify that this does not mean if you feel like you are a wanderer, this does not mean that you are better than anybody else. In fact, you came here to serve third density beings to help. You are the helper. And, um, and so this is not me, but you are also, because you are a wanderer, you are also going to be targeted more than anybody else. And so sometimes what tends to happen is that you will experience spiritual attacks, all sorts of stuff that you don't know where it's coming from. And it's basically coming from the fact that, that the fourth density negative can see you, even though you don't know for sure that's who you that that's that you just know you're different and that's how i always felt growing up like i always felt a little bit different and i was i would get attacked a lot and i would you know that i get physically i mean mr fox has seen a lot of my phys i get physically assaulted by by spirits a lot and it's because you are here to fight the front line for people who need your help and it's like Catherine, you said one time about the tuning forks you know and as mr fox is saying some wanderers are not it's not going to be their mission to be on youtube like Catherine and me it's not going that's not part of their mission they're just going to be in their own area and just being there is that tuning for fork of vibration that's naturally going to pull the other ones up around it and so some wanderer so i, I want to make that clear as well if you are a wanderer it doesn't mean that you have to be in a position of being a public person or anything like that. Like I think Mr. Rogers was a wanderer from Mr. Rogers neighborhood because he's like the one celebrity that nobody has anything nasty to say about. And he really helped a lot of people, but so, but yeah. it doesn't mean oh. you have to go ahead. Sorry. They, they, they say each wanderer has, has its unique abilities, biases, right. and also special, 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 I can't even say that word, specialities <laughs> and specialities so that, so that from each portion of each density represented among the wanderers comes an array of pre-incarnative talents, which mm -hmm. then may be expressed upon uh, upon the this plane. Yeah. So so in in offering itself before the incarnation comes some you know they they have a, a special service or or a, in addition to the vibrational frequency of love and light and so it's not always that you know you have something specific in mind that you're going to do it's just that you're coming here and you have these natural abilities yeah and that they can possibly be expressed as that wanderer awakens yeah but they also say there is never any specific intentions that a wanderer can have that that is necessarily directed or planned at an event that could possibly happen in the future. So they, they don't cut wanderers don't come down to maybe help uh, um, avoid a world war or something like that. Yeah. It, it's never like that. It's never like them looking into the future and saying that, that, Oh, okay, I'm going to come down at this time because I need to help with this situation that could possibly unfold. Because a wanderer's job isn't to hijack. That's what the negative does. Right. Uh huh. Negative yeah. it's is going to hijack. It's being, brought, it's being brought down. The, the wanderer is coming down because they've reached such a a purity in their in their will to serve. Yeah. They're going to help people move through. It's like the Navajo would teach their kids the difference between. Uh, light magic and black magic is that light magic you're working with nature you're not trying to stop what is to come you're helping people move with the outcome of their life instead of trying to rearrange nature and stop nature to serve yourself so there's not a hijacking with the wanderers they're here to allow what's supposed to happen to happen but to right. help uh, you know whatever in whatever capacity they're here to serve right yeah can i ask mr fox in your experience, what you know about wanderers, do wanderers find it easy to 
um, recognize at a sort of subconscious level other wanderers, do you think? Yeah, I would think that they, they would be more likely to be able to pick up on other wanderers because, because the wanderers tend to sort of pool together. Yeah. yeah. Um, but on the flip side of that, wanderers also aren't necessarily, you know, they're, because a wanderer would, would come down from such a refined, harmonious density that wanderers are less likely to pick up on the negative intentions of someone yeah so they end up getting involved with people that ha don't have their best intentions at heart and they're they're less likely to be able to pick up on those nefarious intentions and that that you know and that also comes with the whole forgetting process that a yeah, lot that's that, that naivety goes through. so the important yeah. to understand is that that a wanderer, when it comes down, it's, it's being subjected to the DNA of the entities here. And wi within that DNA is the forgetting. So it's important that a wanderer doesn't come down with the remembering of its fifth and sixth density life because they would be treated as gods. They would have all the ascended abilities and more. And, and so they have this deep forgetting process, just like everyone else in third density. And that's, that's where the danger is. And that's what makes wanderers so, so brave is that they can get caught back up in a third density cycle. And if they get caught back up in a third density cycle, they have to repeat the whole master cycle of 75,000 years to be able to then graduate into fourth density. And then once you're in fourth density, you know, their, their fourth density will definitely be speeded up because the veil will be lifted, but they would still have to go through and le relearn some fourth density and depending on where they came from, fifth density, and then going back to six so they can get stuck back in, you know, for lack of better description, the karmic cycle. So that's yeah. the pitfall that we want people to understand is that just because you're a wonder doesn't mean you're safe. And right. in fact, you're yeah. going to be targeted and um, you're, the darkness is going to try to feed off you and is going to try to pull you to the negative because right. you're, you're like the creme de la creme of, of, of feeding. Yeah. And, and so, so another reason, another reason why, you know, you would, a, a wanderer would have to be veiled is to protect the, the free will of third density. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, so so the wanderers who volunteer for, for for third density, their their DNA connections are going to be the same as the the entities here, and so that's what makes them go through the for the, for the forgetting process. But even a realized wanderer is not going to be able to get back their fifth and sixth density abilities. Yeah even the most realized wanderer in third density, they're always going to be limited by the third density because they have to preserve the free will of the third density beings that are looking to go through all of their lessons and be able to be harvestable to a fourth density. Mr. Fox, you told me a story from that Ra tells about um, their experience when they were harvesting from third to fourth density and they were in a predominantly positive planet and they had two wanderers that came down to help them. Do you want to tell people just so people understand the dangers that wanderers can the yeah. pitfalls? So, so Ra's planet, when, were, when Ra's planet was going through third density, um, which was mostly positive, it wasn't, it wasn't a mixed density like, like we're experiencing here at earth where we have both, both third density, a potential for for polarizing third density or fourth density positive and also fourth density negative they only had you know their planet was in their their um everyone on the planet was moving towards fourth density positive anyway two wanderers had come down and uh to to help with their transition into in the fourth density positive and they ended up you know, and they came down with the best intentions because they were coming down as wanderers from from sixth density, and they ended up not only not graduating to fourth density, 
positive, but they ended up graduated into a fourth density negative because they had formed, they had for, ended up forming a cult. Yeah, and they were surprised when it happened. You know, they said when they woke, when basically like when they woke up in fourth density, they were like, holy shit, you know, like what the fuck just happened? We just graduated the fourth density negative. And they really, you know, when the veil's lifted, you realize you came from sixth density. So I had to go through, they had to both be basically like get in line with the fourth density service to self ways and then figure out a way out and then redo another fourth density positive millions of year cycle to eventually move up the ladder. But it's funny that, you know, Ra says, yeah, you know, in the end, all is well, you know, all ends well, even though you have to go through millions of years of, of the evolutionary process, you know, they're like, oh, in the end, it's no big deal. And I guess that's the way you look at things, you know, on the other side of, of, Cause of time is not, well, and I want to say too, so this is what I want to bring, why I want to bring this story up as well, Mr. Vox, we, cause I, I titled this, uh, you know, the hierarchy of the negative side and we, cause what, what basically, um, and you can explain this how you want to, cause we talk about this a lot, just off camera with, with, um, what we're seeing with the negative, with the pecking order, the enslavement, that's why I laugh that they were cult leaders because that's very much enslavement of people. Um, and that's the negative, whereas the positive is social memory complex. So everybody's working together equally. There is no following the leader. There is no elite people. You know, we're seeing that a lot within our own community of people trying to pick a certain leader and follow the leader and get in line. And there's there's a lot of cult behavior within the quote unquote truther community, too. And that's why I want to bring this up, because that's actually polarizing negative, not positive. So so when we looked, can you like just talk a little bit about why? them becoming cult leaders would put them in fourth density negative with the enslavement. Is there anything you want to, you want to um, elaborate on with that? Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know the intentions of the, I mean, I don't know the, the whole, you know, they didn't give a complete story. You know, they're just generalizing the whole thing. And I'm sure that these two wanderers had the best of intentions, you know, mm -hmm. but you know, at the same time, I don't know if they were realizing if they were cognizant of how they were manipulating people. You know, because they came, they they had formed, from what I understand, you know, a sort of religion, in the, which they thought was going to help pe move their followers towards graduating the fourth density positive. But I guess through the manipulation and the control that they subjected all of these people, in the end, they graduated negative. So can I just ask, because one of the themes from what you've both been saying that really stands out to me, and I don't know nearly as much about Wanderers as you two do, is this real focus on everything we've spoken about so far with the law of one about the free will and the free choice. Right. And one of the things I've I've been actually was just recording something just before this about it's really interesting when we all take that as a learning experience ourselves. One thing we can all lesson take now to sort of say, when in our communication or, or our behaviours are we trying to manipulate other people's thoughts and behaviours and opinions? Right. Because even when you, because most people, like you were just saying, Mr. Fox, when people are doing that, most people are really passionately believing they're doing it because they're, right they they believe in what what they're doing but the example you've just given and correct me if i'm wrong shows that this is where we have to be really really cautious because despite your beliefs anytime you're trying to manipulate the free will of another being there's a danger there right correct yeah mm. our guy our guide people with a certain intention yes you know like you, the information that that one has should just be offered over and um and the right people it will attract the right people and the right people will you know and if it resonates with those people then then they'll they'll um take it to heart i guess yeah, yeah it's, it's the difference between you know when you look at things like teachers Te a teacher's job is to eventually not be needed a leader's yeah. job is to always be needed and yeah. so that's where the, the becomes, you know, and, and I know, Mr. Fox, you've had many teachers. I've had many teachers. And there is a fine line with a teacher between the teacher giving you information that you're asking for 
and then allowing you the the space to to practice that on your own without the interference of somebody that becomes controlling which then becomes manipulation and so it's it's um it's it's definitely it, it, there is a fine line there and you see the gray of that fine line in a lot of different organizations where people go step a little bit they they cross that boundary and and yeah they might not even be aware that they're doing it that they're crossing that boundary of manipulation of allowing the student the free will choice to take the information and practice it as they need to um right. and and i know um so yeah and this gets the the what the Ross has about, he said that the challenge and danger of the wanderer is that it will forget its mission, become yeah. quickly involved, and thus be swept into the malstorm from which it had incarnated to aid. So it's 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 just as easy for a wanderer coming from a higher density to come here and get caught, like they say, in the malstorm of the chaos of third density and end up not only being able to to not not just not a, being able to aid in ribbing the malstorm, but actually adding to it. Yeah. So it's wanderers just, could also make the same mistakes as yeah. what you say. So wanderers are even actually in a more a more tumultuous. A wanderer has an a high, they're even in more danger than like a high priority soul. Because not only are they coming back into the third density cycle and forgetting who they are and have those karmic lessons, but they've all, they're also getting more attacked because the other side can see who they are. So that, that leads to the propensity to want to take revenge or to want, you know, so. Yeah, and, to add on, and to add on that, so, you know, wanderers, all, yes, wanderers end up getting attacked more by the higher density service to self people, but also the organic portals that are being controlled by by those by those people but also you know wanderers before they come down they'll come up with you know certain lessons that they also want to learn so they're coming to serve but also they take it as an opportunity to be able to polarize more greatly towards the positive or the negative depending on which way it goes um, and so they'll they'll set themselves certain lessons up for this life and mm -hmm. and a lot of the time wanderers will end up being a little overly ambitious with the amount of lessons that they pile on themselves because th we coming to coming to down to third density from such a harmonious realm that harmonious realm doesn't offer the potency of lessons that one would experience when they came down to third density and so they see this incredible opportunity. Okay, I'm going to come down there. I've got this mission, but at the same time, I'm going to give myself all of these lessons so I can refine myself to a greater extent. So when I come back, when I pass away here, and I and I and they return to fifth or sixth density, their light bodies end up being much more refined by if they were if, if they succeed in those lessons that they give themselves and they say a lot of the time wanderers will pile on too many lessons because they don't remember how intense of an experience it is in third density and also they they they're not really cognizant of how intense the veil is here yeah and so not only is a wanderer being attacked more and especially as a wanderer gets closer and closer to their awakening and realization of, the, of themselves as a wanderer, you know, as they get closer to that, the attacks come heavier and heavier because the service to self, especially the higher density ones, don't want you to aid in waking people up. Because remember, their, their ultimate goal is conquest. And mm -hmm. they're trying to keep everyone asleep and keep the veil as heavy as they can. There's so many questions going in my head at the moment. One thing that comes to mind immediately, Mr. Fox, is do you know, do they talk about whether wanderers always come back in human form? Yes. Right. Wanderers will always come back in human form. Yeah. I mean, there are, there are a handful of third density entities that we would call animals yeah but 
I, I don't know anything about whether a wanderers would come into a third density animal body. Yeah. Now, like a dolphin, uh -huh, which it's, it, that, a dolphin is a, is a third density being. But also, uh, but also, like I said, I think I may have mentioned here last time is that also a landscape could be third density. Yes. Yeah. I saw lots of dolphins over my last trip. Yeah. <laughs> there were only a few of us that saw them and we kept seeing them. It was fantastic. Uh -huh. um, this is this is just absolutely fascinating. I think Bryce and I are laughing because there can be a tendency when you start finding out these things to sort of um for the ego to kick in and people think I'm special because I'm a star seed or I'm a wanderer. But it it's what it strikes me that it's be very careful what you wish for because there are a lot of with all these roles that we've all chosen and every single person has chosen um whether they're conscious of it or not to come back at this time to fulfill a certain role and learn certain lessons. What's but really yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Well, it's just interesting for people to understand that, you know, there are real challenges associated with fulfilling a lot of these roles as well as benefits. For, for sure. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, it's, it's good to realize that, that, you know, even if you are a wanderer, that you can, you can get stuck here through mistakes, but also, you know, you shouldn't rest on your laurels because to get out, you still have to graduate the same way a third density being would have to graduate out of third density into fourth. And that's, you don't get this that's for, that's for yeah. your actions. Your actions have to be 51% service to others, regardless of whether you're a wanderer or not. And, and it's, it, it is a, it's a dangerous, it's a dangerous um, mindset to take that if you realize you're a wanderer, that you're somehow special. Yeah. No, and I just I, I was laughing too cuz as I said in the beginning when you first said I think you're a wanderer and you were starting to talk to me and teach me. At first I was like, "Oh, this makes so much sense. Absolutely. Like the dots are connecting." And then all of a sudden you're like, "Oh shit. Like what? I, I want to speak to who let me sign this? Like who who let me think this was a good idea to, you know, cuz then all of a sudden you realize it's not going to stop. The attacks are not going to stop. And then you're right, Mr. Fox, the more you, and we, we talk about awaken guys. And I think, uh, I think I'm preaching to the choir right now. I'm not talking about knowing if that's really Biden or not. I'm talking, we're talking about your spiritual awakening, like the spirit, the inner awakening that you, the gnosis that you have. And, and this is also mirrored in the Emerald tablets. Thought speaks about this as well. The more you find yourself aligning with the path of light of good, the more you're going to get attacked. The more the brothers of darkness as the Emerald tablets call them are going to come after you. Now, Mr. Fox, what happens? And um, I know, You've told me off camera a little bit about this, but what happens, let's just give an example, if a wanderer comes down in any situation to help and um, gets totally turned while in this existence. So before, so let's say like Catherine or myself or you or any, any other wanderers were here, and then we got totally turned into doing these service to self horrible disgusting things while we were here in this third density what would happen at that point vibrationally you would you could just you can graduate into fourth density negative didn't they actually, say it's actually ross says it's easier the, yeah. the 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 greater you've polarized towards the positive the easier it is to flip to the negative because you've gained all of this spiritual power and all of this and and some knowledge and and so you can you can flip very easily it, more easily than someone who's just you know at the bottom rung trying to to graduate to negative a, a positive person could graduate to negative much much faster but let me get into so well can i just ask one let more me question get back into, let me get back into talking about um people may be getting um, a little bit of ego mm -hmm. over thinking that there may be a star seed or a, or a wanderer because, because a wanderer when they come down is totally and completely a creature of third density. So there is just as much of a chance of a wanderer getting stuck in this third density cycle as anyone else 
So they say, they say the only difference occurs in the spirit complex, which, if it wishes, has an armor of light, if you will, which enables it to recognize more clearly that which, that which is not as it would appropriately, appropriately be desired. So it comes, you, you know, the wanderer sort of feels like things aren't quite right here. Yeah, yeah. that the, the there's there they they can feel the the chaos just a, a little bit deeper in their in their being. But also, the the one special thing about a, that separates a wanderer from a normal third density being here would be that they do have an, an armor of light that they can call upon. Yeah, but that I think that that takes some some time to be able to to realize how to activate that that armor of light. But they say that that's that's the one thing and only thing that separates a wanderer from a third density being is that they have they do have a little bit more protection available to them. Well, it's because and, they're more they're more hunted. Um, right. I want to make exactly. that. And so and so, I think it's even more dangerous to be a wanderer than just a high priority soul because you are more hunted, you are more targeted. But also, you know, someone being a wanderer being attacked with as much as they are, who's to say that their their you know armor of light isn't activated, and that's the, that's why they're able to sort of continue moving through these attacks when if these same attacks were subjected onto your normal third density being they would probably be taken out pretty quickly you see and so just because you're being attacked and be and suffering that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have your armor of light working for you doesn't mean that you don't have that activated within you well, that comes back to what I was saying in the beginning. And I hope that because I, I just really I want to really I hope this resonates with people watching because I suffered. And Mr. Fox, you know, a lot about my childhood and, and just everything I went through as a kid and just constant abuse, just constant, constant um, into my 20s. And I did not know anything about this. And I'm looking at my siblings thinking, why aren't they experiencing the same thing I am? Um, and I just made up in my head that that was because God literally created me to be a punching bag. And that didn't, that did not help my self-esteem, um, coming into adulthood. And, and it wasn't until I really met you and started working through this material. It was like, it, it was like, um, a hug from God. Like, yeah, you have been attacked, but you're not a punching bag. And in fact, you've been, you're attacked because you're a wanderer, but you've been protected. And if you did not have that protection, I would have been dead by now. You yeah. know, and so well, and also wanderers go through go through um, health challenges as well. They say due the to, due to the extreme variance between the the vibratory realms that the wanderer comes from. Um, as a general rule, they'll have some form of of handicap, difficulty, or feeling of alien alien as like a severe feeling of alienation. And uh, actually gonna ask the most, they also say the most common of these difficulties is the alienation and the reaction against the planetary vibration uh, by personality disorders. So, so sometimes, you know, uh, wanderers will have little personality quirks and also probably most likely, you know, be introverts and to feel like they don't quite they don't quite fit in. And that's just due to them coming down from this very refined, harmonious realm into these into these third density bodies, and being in this third density vibrational frequency brings up these difficulties, these health difficulties, and some mental dis difficulties. Yeah. And well, the, I was going to ask you, Mr. Fox, um, to like let's talk about if that's okay with Catherine. Some of the uh, side effects of being a wanderer, which yeah. Um, when you talk about deformities, it doesn't mean like um, like I have terrible digestion. Of, I've had uh, autoimmune issues. Um, there's all these different things that, um, and Mr. Fox, you know me in real life. I have terrible digestion, don't I? Yeah. Terrible. And so, um, and so, let can we go through some of these like side effects of of what it is well, to be a wonder? Yeah, that's and that's what I just explained about the the different handicaps. But that are there? Um, can there have. More, I mean, do some wanderers have like psychic abilities? I'm not any more than just a regular third density being. No. 
uh, um, the alienation. The I mean, unless they, unless they, they, they possibly needed those to, you know, because I think that you make some choices there, or you know, there, there's there's variation within entities within, you know, the fifth and sixth densities, and so you know, certain entities could have refined those aspects of themselves that can be expressed once they take these bodies. And so, yeah, I mean, some wanderers can be more psychic, psychic, but as a general rule, that's not necessarily, you know, the case for, for everyone. And so they're all going to come, you're all going to come with, with your unique abilities. Um, so a little bit, so I want to, so wanderers do not necessarily come from parents who are wanderers, correct? They might be the oddball. You might have feel like you were the odd one out in your whole, you're, you're the black sheep of your family that maybe, you know, um, you don't fit in with the typical um, trajectory of your siblings or your parents. Um, you might g go along to get along, but. Uh, and a, and a, you know, a wanderer could also be sort of the black sheep of the family as well. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, like I would consider myself the black sheep of my family, even though I did everything I was supposed to do. I never felt comfortable doing it. I never felt, you know, like I wanted to have the the life that like my sister is. I, there was always something that was a little bit off there that didn't. And I was reading something you sent me the other day, Mr. Fox, about uh, wanderers who come from six density from like, I think it was the Cassiopeians, where they kind of have a weird a weird relationship with like traditional family sometimes like most wanderers uh don't typically you know it's it's like a little uncomfortable for them does that make sense remember you sent me that thing to read about the sixth density uh-huh yeah yeah that, that's it for uh, that fourth fifth and sixth density wanderers will will have some some key characteristics that that you know, make them stand out a little bit. But that's that's a little too obscure and complex, and and, and I didn't really want to get into that. But I did want to touch on how, um, since we were talking about the health issues and things like that, um, I wanted to talk about you know the 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 dangers that a wanderer faces because they're naturally less distorted towards deviousness of like third density negative souls or organic portals and th that wanderers don't often recognize as easily um people's negative intentions and also at the same time they don't necessarily understand fully um the power behind negative thoughts and how wanderers can tend to be very hard on themselves because they don't really understand the power of those uh, of those negative thoughts that can cycle in their heads, um, but also more importantly that you know um, I think wanderers tend to um, think that everyone has really like the best ten their best intentions at heart. Yeah, yeah they don't understand um, deeply negative beings. They have a hard time grasping why someone would want to manipulate someone or why someone would try to destroy someone. Um, and so it's important to understand that, I think. Yeah. And that's got huge implications for, you know, when when we look at the situation that's come to light over the last few years for most people. I know a lot of people have been looking into that for a lot longer, but you know, there are, this is why it's so important for people to keep an open mind and try and be in a non-judgmental space, because quite often the reason why people don't see the bad, the evil, etc., is for exactly those reasons. Yeah, mm -hmm, for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. they can't see that in themselves. And so they have a hard time understanding that, that yeah. people would, would yeah, uh -huh, move in that direction. And I, I get that. You said to me once, Mr. Fox, you were like, people play on your sympathies. So as someone who, or even a souled person, even just someone who has a soul, for the Wanderers, it's different because it's been so long since you played the third density game. But um, to actually understand that people are man are manipulating you for maniacal reasons, when you yourself, just that's just out of your realm of reality and just that people would lie to you or or you know it's it's just it's um and, and that really kind of it's for the wanderers again as i said it's like you've been out of this game for such a long time that 
these little maneuvers that third density will do are these these chess moves it's just not even within your realm of reality that anybody would lie to you or try to manipulate because you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't do that intentionally yourself right um and and it is true wonders do have a naivety so you have to be very careful when you figure out you are or you have suspicions that you are a wonderer you do have to sec almost have to like d dissect interpersonal relationships because um because you 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 are aware that's a blind spot that you have you think everybody's being honest i mean you said to me the other day mr fox you were like bryce you have a really great group of people in your life just leave it at that like you know basically like stop you know uh -huh. <laughs> other people, you know so um so yeah um and and you are targeted and that's not going to stop that's the thing is no matter what as long as we're in third density you are going to be targeted by the fourth density negative they are going to fourth density fifth density negative beings that are controlling the people the organic portals that's one thing i want to actually a, a question a viewer had mr fox and if you don't mind i'll just since we're kind of talking about organic portals uh someone was under the impression that organic portals are used by both the light and the darkness and i said no because the light does not interfere with fear with free will so can we just touch on that a little bit again right the organic portals are are only here to be manipulated by you know, they were put here because i mean well i should say but they were you remember or, organic portals were were used to help us transition from second to third density they were just supposed to be used for that small transition but the the 4d and 50 service to self kept those those organic portals in the cycle so so they could they could use them as tools to help steer our evolutionary path yeah and so at one time they were a positive thing and a necessary thing a tool to help the creatures of second density transition into the planet's third density cycle but then those beings were no longer supposed to be in circulation. That DNA makeup that limits those beings from having the, the, the top three energy centers. Yeah, they weren't meant to stick around. But the 4D surface to self and 5D kept those beings in cycle, cycling through. And so remember, there's 50% of the of the entities living on this planet or organic portals and those organic portals can be manipulated and used by the fourth and fifth density service to self beings and so it's not like they're constantly being used as puppets because they can function on their own just fine yeah they can be extremely intelligent people people that that create you know wondrous inventions or they can be the lowliest of people with low intelligence yeah so the whole spectrum but the thing that makes them unique is that for one like we had mentioned they don't have the higher centers but two they have a direct link the 4d and 50 service itself have a direct link into them and so they can steer those beings and i don't think that they're ever just using them as a puppet i think they just they just sort of steer them in the direction they need them and they sort of drop them off there and they do their thing because they understand what personality quirks they have and what you know sort of narcissism they have and patterns that they ex that exist in their lives and so you know they're sort of machines that work on their own to a certain extent and then they can be plugged in with certain types of of uh commands and I'm sure they're not direct commands, you know, like voices in someone's head. I don't think it's like that. It's, I think it's much more complex and much more subtle. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I'm sure that they can get in there and very literally control these beings. But that's their yeah, I was about to say. That's, I the four, I think that's the four D and fifth D service to self connections to our planet, our third, our third density cycle. And that's like I said, that is one uh, major way of how they're helping to steer things. In the direction that they are trying to hijack our evolution into fourth density and, positive and that's the big catch is like that whole free will a, a light being a person in the light is not going to want to manipulate your free will or do anything to try to influence or manipulate your choices consciously whereas 
the 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 fourth and the fifth density negative that's that's all they do is hijack and yeah. i would so with, the, with the pot with the positive with the positive side the, the service to this the service to others side uh they they off the higher density let's say they're not they're not coming they're not coming down you know to our planet and manipulating things but they do help to create especially for wanderers they do help to create awakening scenarios for wanderers yeah mm -hmm. in a way that's not manipulating someone's free will and so um they even talk about that they said they the don't use organic portals to do that no they don't uh -uh. they don't use organic portals to do that but the negative can use organic portals to help um help pass on their ways of being yeah which uh, both the, the the cassiopeians and Ra talk about basically they're what they call negative greetings yeah. so it's like greeting people in a way that uh are, are entering people's lives in a way where they're teaching them probably indirectly the ways of the negative service to self path through manipulation and those kind of tactics of conquest. Yeah. And so they're sort of offering, offering the teachings in a way of the negative through the learned negative experience. And then on the yeah. flip side, on the flip side, there's the positive, greetings which we can call awakenings yeah that they use for both wanderers and third density beings that are closer to graduating so they said the methods used to awaken wanderers are varied the center of each approach is the entrance into the conscious and subconscious in such a way as to avoid causing fear and to maximize the potential for an understandable subjective experience, which has meaning to the entity. Much such experiences occur in sleep. Others in the midst of many activities during the waking hours. This approach is flexible. It does not necessarily include the quote unquote close encounter syndrome as people are aware of. And so um, as an example for me, when I was about 12 years old, I was awakened in the middle of the night and my whole room was filled with, with pure white light and there was white light shining through the window and underneath my door. And I sat up in bed and noticed that everything in the room uh, looked like it was made from LED material. So everything was still there in its proper place, but it was just made of like this glowing light material. All I did was just sat up in my bed and looked around and felt this deep feeling of, of like peace and, and joy. And I just sat up and looked around for a while. And, uh, and then I just, I guess, fell back asleep. And I remember waking up the next morning and I still have my eyes closed and I can see the sunlight coming through my eyelids, but I was praying that I was just going to wake up and it was still going to be in that white light, you know, situation that I was in. But anyway, I would say that that would be one of my, um, one of my waking experiences. So, you know, you could say possibly I thought, you know, it was possibly an abduction experience, but, but I didn't see any, you know, ship and I didn't see any entities, but it was still a potent enough experience that it waked me up to, sort of the unknown. And from that point on, I felt like I had more um, of, of exper a spiritual experience of life. There was more wonder and more curiosity. And uh, yeah. So, you know, wanderers can have those. If you look back in your life, you, you could possibly have had some paranormal, which you can call paranormal experiences that sort of changed your perception of, of reality and how you fit into that reality. And, uh, and you could be, you know, your life could have really changed directions or just your outlook changed directions at that point. And that could say, so you could say that that is how the positive service to service to others side offers, offers help. Or, or you could say that that's a positive greeting. They didn't interfere, they didn't interfere with your free will. They didn't try to manipulate, but at the same time, they offered you an experience that that is, in a sense, 
unexplainable and mysterious. But that is what gives the you know positive service to others beings awakenings. Yeah. And they're just coming straight to you to give you this experience. There's no organic portal being used. There's no, yeah. Exactly, um, yeah. So it's uh-huh. very different. And it's, it, there's no, it's not diabolical. Um, there shouldn't be any fear. Like they say, they, yeah. they, they, they avoid causing any sort of, any sort of fear at all. Love it. Yeah. So there's a lot for people to take in, particularly if this is a concept that people on um you know familiar with but what would you say mr vox the sort of take-home messages you'd like people to get from this both in terms of if they're thinking they might be wanderer themselves or they might know a wanderer yeah well how can we well, use as this ra, as, as ra so, says as ra says the the wanderers whether awakened or not are usually the ones that gravitate towards this material and this yeah. material resonates with them yeah but there's nothing wrong with not being a wanderer yeah. yeah you're not lesser than anyone just because you're not a wanderer yeah i mean i think us wanderers are fucking crazy for coming down here anyway no, I'm, just kidding. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm like what well, i want to speak to the manager who left me unsupervised well um, it, take, it, it takes both bravery and foolhardiness <laughs> to come down as a wanderer uh-huh <laughs> so I'm not sure I'm a wanderer because I love it here. So yeah, I, uh-huh. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. I, well, it doesn't I, mean that you have to. It doesn't mean that you would have to dislike it here to be a to be a wanderer. Yeah, no, yeah, I know, be, I know. There could be okay. there could be well-adjusted wanderers, especially you know living out in the country and and you know I I've spent my time in, in the in the country and yeah. uh, life is definitely a lot easier to bear. <laughs> so much easier it's so interesting when you you take yourself out of that mass being in with loads of people everything changes sort of energetically you know when we take ourselves into more in balance when you've got the species more in balance rather than one species is only over dominant in one particular area yeah. well i found that absolutely fascinating um so many things running through my mind so many questions but for me the overriding thing is just like as you say it doesn't mean any of these these labels these roles that everyone's chosen it's not that one's better or worse than the others it's like you said at the beginning Bryce that when we understand more about them it can really sort of help us understand ourselves more and when we understand ourselves more not only are we kinder and less judgmental to ourselves but we're kinder and less judgmental to other people that are fulfilling different roles absolutely it's that whole cassiopeia knowledge is power knowledge protects and knowledge is infinite if you think you might be a wanderer that is no that does not mean you get to go around and boss people around and you're not you're not any better or any more special than anybody else again if you think you're a wanderer you came here to serve and so therefore the people you are serving the entities you are serving that's why you came here to be of service to them and so just knowing that and that's why you're targeted will help at least for me it helped me it deepened my relationship with god it deepened my relationship with myself because i realized that there was a reason and it wasn't the reason i thought it was that things were happening and it's a reason why i'm different from my sister there's a reason why i have these oddities a reason why my my immune system was always a little off and my digestion off and so it's just something for you to know does not mean that you don't get to do your work because you will get stuck back in third. That's my biggest fear is getting stuck back in a, a loop again. You know, you still, you st- everything goes same as normal. You still got to do your own work. You still got to do your own, uh, make your own choices, um, really work on being the best you you can be and how you can serve, you know, same rules still apply. You still have to, even as a wanderer, you, you took that volunteer to come back here and do it again. And so you're going to have to, you're not going to get to, pass through the harvesting or the graduating phase you're going to have to go through with everybody else too and so um that's my hope is that people will take this and they'll it's it'll strengthen their their spirit not their ego but their spirit if that makes sense and mr fox is there anything else you want to last say to anybody who might be going holy shit i think i'm a wanderer like is there is there anything no that's about it unless unless you all have any questions we can we can shut it down here and and uh well, yeah, let's put, it on, put the questions below 
um the the channels bryce send me the link to your wonder one so i can oh. put that thing below the video well, the yeah i was about to say i'll put the organic portal one with mr fox i'll put that yeah. in the description box i'll send it to you Catherine. because if you're like i don't know what he's talking about organic you know there's a whole episode we did on organic portal so you can um you know knowledge is power knowledge protects so thank you so much mr fox for um doing this information i will also be putting a link to the first book of the law of one because as always you guys mr fox is not this is not just something he's discovered their actual book series and you can go on this journey yourself of upsetting this information that he is speaking about he's just been studying it for a very long time so anyway guys and i also put Catherine's links down in the description box as well as well with everything else so all right you guys well we'll be back on thursday with our coffee chat and then beyond that um we'll see you guys soon bye everybody bye bye